Ciders are a simple and easy beginner homebrew. You just need some juice and some yeast. And with very little effort, you can have a delicious, although pretty basic, 6% hard cider ready to drink in just a couple weeks. But what if you wanted more flavor and more booze without too much more effort? That's exactly what I'm hoping for in this bourbon barrel aged hard cider. But don't worry, you don't need a full on barrel sitting in your living room. I've got some tricks to help give the idea of bourbon age without the need of a giant oak barrel or the need to age for months on end. More on that in a second. But for now, let's jump in and get some things together to start making this cider. Like the other ciders I've made on this channel, it all starts with juice. It doesn't really matter which brand, as long as they don't have any preservatives in it, you're fine. But these days, most common brands don't really have any. Today, I went with Treetop, but using this juice alone only gives us a 6% cider. And we want something with a bit more oomph. So I grabbed these frozen apple concentrates. This should give us a boost in sugar content without adding too much more liquid. And it's also better than just using straight sugar, in my opinion. Sugar will increase the alcohol, but it will leave you with an overly dry cider with very little apple flavor. We want some apple character to stand up against the bourbon flavor we'll be adding later. To make this, you'll need something to ferment in. Glass, plastic, a food safe bucket, even the bottle that the cider came in can work. It's also recommended to add some nutrients to support fermentation. There isn't much in apple juice to help our yeasty boys out. So something like DAP or my preferred Firm 8 these are both sold at homebrew stores or online. Or even just boiling some bread yeast and adding that in can work. But since for this one we have even more sugars than normal, you'll definitely want to add some form of nutrient. So add that and the juice to the fermenter, and then follow that up with a frozen concentrate. It helps to thaw these out a little bit beforehand to easily mix in. And for reference, I'll be making a one gallon batch and adding in two of these concentrates, which will raise the original gravity from 1.050 to 1.080. And the higher the gravity or sugar content is, the higher the alcohol percentage will end up with. This should give us a cider that's about 10.5%. Finally, the yeast. I've tried a ton of different yeasts for ciders, from wine to ale to even cider specific yeasts. And lately, I just tend to go with Quake for a few reasons. One, you can ferment it hot meaning up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit with no off flavors. Other yeast would make for a nasty final product if you did that. So this means that no matter where you live on earth, you should be able to make an amazing cider, as long as you can get some. And the second reason is, Quake tends to leave some sweetness and body to the cider, meaning it doesn't taste completely dry or tart, and allows for the apple flavor to come through more without the need for back sweetening. Specifically for this recipe, I'm using Lutra, which you can find at most homebrew stores these days, or even online. And dry is perfect for this especially if you're gluten intolerant. The dry strain is GF friendly. Lastly, it has an alcohol tolerance of 15%, which is relatively high for ale yeast and perfect for the strong cider. Just sprinkle it in, give the fermenter a good shake to mix in and add some oxygen, then cover it up with an airlock or a loose lid. Then let that baby ferment for about two weeks or however long it takes until it stops fermenting. Okay, now for some bourbon action. As home brewers, we're pretty blessed that we don't have to abide by the laws that breweries do when it comes to adding spirits and alcohol into beer. In most cases, they can't really just add straight bourbon into their beers. They need to age the beer in bourbon barrels to slowly infuse the flavor and any alcohol it adds. But for us guys and gals brewing in our homes, we can just add a few shots of our favorite alcohol and call it a day. And that totally works. I've done it a bunch before. But let's take it a step further and do a little oak infusion. You might have seen oak cubes or chips before. They're often included in wine kits. And now they even have oak spirals for maximum surface contact and infusion. The idea being that they add oak characteristics from the barrel without needing to have a full on barrel. So my plan is to take a couple of these oak spirals and soak them in bourbon for a couple weeks to see if they can add even more smoky, rich flavor to the cider. The only issue is that I've never really used these spirals before, so I wasn't sure whether I should just drop them into some bourbon or boil them first. So I did a test. I boiled one for 10 minutes and then added it into a sample of bourbon and the other, I just added it in as is. I'm guessing since they come pre-charred, boiling would help to mellow out some of that intense, ashy, or acrid flavor. I decided to infuse those for two weeks, and if you do make this, do it before the cider so that they can finish at the same time. And feel free to use whatever bourbon you like. I'm just using what I had on hand. And after two weeks, I did a taste test to compare. Okay, here we go. So on the left here, we have the one that I boiled, and on the right here, I have the one that I didn't boil, and just added it straight in. And then right here in the middle, I have the control, which is just some straight from the bottle to kind of give us a sense. So I think I'll start there just to kind of see 
where we're at. It's got a good bite to it, smoky. It's bourbon, you know? Let's see, let's go with the one that was boiled first. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's try this one. So that feels the most intense. The one that was not boiled, almost ashy, kind of like char to it. I almost need to try this one again, compare it to. Yeah, it definitely is adding a bit more of an intense character to it, which is like not a bad thing. I think it kind of gives it that more of a woody, smoky thing. I would say if you wanted to go for like the smoothest option, it would be to go for the plain bourbon, just add it straight in. But since I kind of want to go for a little bit more of an oomph, kind of stand up against the stronger cider, I'm going to go with the one that I boiled first. It has a bit of a smoother taste than this one that I just added straight in, which was pretty much just like very ashy char flavor. There's even like little bits of char floating around, whereas this just overall a bit smoother. So let's see, I don't know. So with that, I strained out the spiral, so I just had the bourbon, and you can always save that for another experiment, then transfer the cider into a keg. Followed it up by the bourbon, and if you want to get really specific on the amount to add, I recommend taking a sample of the cider and doing some dosing tests like I did for this tequila pear cider. It really helps hone in on the specific amount you like. But I was feeling particularly ballsy this day, so I just dumped it all in. I closed up the keg and carbonated it in the kegerator for about a week. And by the way, you could totally just add the bourbon right into the fermenter and then bottle this up if that's what you prefer. Either way, once the cider was chilled and fully carved, it was time to find out if this extra strong bourbon cider was any good. From the outside, it looks like any cider, but taking a whiff, you can sense there's something different. A slight smoky, woody scent wraps around the apple aroma. And upon taking a sip, it's a very similar sensation to sipping a nice whiskey. There's an immediate bite that's followed by a smooth sweetness. And I think the quake definitely helps keep the apple flavor alive, with the bourbon flavor coming in to remind you that this isn't your grandma's cider. After the first sip, you'll immediately be coming back for more, but just take it slow because this is above 10% ABV. Overall, just a really fun and easy drink to make. And if you want, you could definitely infuse the spirals right into the keg or fermenter for even more oaky punch, which I might do next time. Or you can always just add more bourbon to your liking. But let me know if you make this, or if you're looking for more cider ideas, I got a whole playlist here of easy ciders. Like that paired tequila cider I mentioned, a real crowd pleaser. Cheers and happy brewing.